Hey, what's up, DIYers? It's Mike Borges with the Mike Borges channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking reverse osmosis systems, and in the event that yours is making a lot of noise, we're going to go out to the kitchen and talk more about it. Let's get started. All right, DIYers, inside the kitchen now, and to the right of the main faucet, there is our reverse osmosis faucet. And in the event that yours is making a lot of noise, hopefully we are going to help you figure out why. And on the side, as you can see, we have what's called an air gap. And an air gap basically allows the system to properly drain the contaminated or water that is filtered out throughout the filtration process and push down the drain hose. The clean water goes to the storage tank and that dirty water flows down the black drain hose and into your plumbing and out where you will not drink it. And this air gap makes some noises. It makes some crackling sounds. And that's basically the sound that this specific faucet makes. This is a GE model. However, in the event that yours is making an obnoxious loud sound, such as maybe a bird chirping or a frog croaking, well, you've got an issue far greater than an air gap normal operation. Let's go down below. And I've got a flashlight down here. And here's the storage tank on the far left hand side. On the right hand side, there is our filter case, the pre-filter, membrane, and post-filter on the very bottom. And in the event that you come over here and your tank is very light, meaning you can basically pick it up with one hand, that's not normal, especially if you have been letting it pressurize and fill for the last two to three hours. And what you could run into is your system constantly draining. Check this out. This is our drain hose right here. And I want you to notice the actual downward slant to it, which is how it is supposed to be. Because again, as that water makes it through the membrane and filter process, it is going to separate the contaminants and flush them down the drain hose and into the P-trap and throughout your plumbing and out of your house. However, your drain hose is not supposed to be drenched like that. That tells us that we have a continuous flow out of our drain hose and that is not good. It should never be that wet. So with that said, really a couple different things can take place. Number one, a flow restrictor, which is this part right there that the red line goes into. Again, that's called a flow restrictor. It manages the flow of the water. And in the event that your flow restrictor is damaged, faulty, or basically just clogged up, you will have an extremely slow water pressure or flow coming out of your system and your tank will never fill. In other words, all your water will be expelled down the drain line and out of the house, never making it into your tank for drinking. And the second thing is the actual pressure inside your tank. In the event that you have more than basically five to seven PSI, which is the standard in most RO tanks, your tank is not going to fill. In other words, right now, if you took off this cap here, and you used a pressure gauge and you hooked it up there and you see that your PSI is about 12 to 15. That's still kind of high because again, the standard is five to seven PSI when this tank is completely empty and then you add the pressure or weight of the water and then it boosts it up to about 10 to 12. However, if you hook an air gauge up and your PSI inside this tank is greater than 15 and your tank is very light and empty, water will never go into that tank. And that is because the PSI in the tank is overpowering the rest of the system. And an example is basically your car tire. In the event that you have a car tire that is low, but it has about 25 PSI in it, and you're trying to bring the PSI in your tire up to maybe 30 to 35. However, the compressor that you are using only has about 15 PSI in it. Well, guess what? The tire itself is overpowering the compressor and your tire will not fill with air. It's basically the same concept. So I just wanted to cover a few basic things in this quick video. And down below in the comment section, as well as the description section, are video links to replace the flow restrictor, also to replace the filters, to sanitize the entire system with bleach, and service the tank. Definitely check those out. Hopefully this helps. Do us a favor, below the video, you will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel, definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching, and we hope to see you at the next video.